Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's more Vikings. Which one, Dan? We're on to episode 17, The Great Army. Previously, all the kids got a visit from Odin. Yes. And they found out that Daddy was no longer. And also, Bjorn introduced himself to some Spanish folks living a nice uh, Saracen life. And uh, that was all. And Floki's wife has gone up the deep end with him. Skull fam! <laughs> <laughs> Walls coming along. See, there's some serious palisades going here. Yeah. They literally got the whole community working on it. That is my knife. Father gave me this knife. I want it. I will kill Lakitha with Father's knife. Well, he can't have it. That's enough. Seriously, let's calm down. <laughs> Give it to me. Damn. We have important decisions to make. Yes. As usual, you must tell us how to behave. Who else would do it? Listen to Uber. We want blood revenge against Ella. Not only against Ella. King Egbert offered our father up like a sacrifice, so we'll do the same thing to him. Yeah. This is what he asked for. Ella has a small kingdom, but Egbert's kingdom is vast. We raise an army. An army bigger than ever before. Sigurd is right. You like that answer? Yeah. <laughs> in the name of Ragnar Lothbrok. And in the name of Odin. We declare war on the whole world. Oh, well, that's a bit much. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know where actually you were going to go with that, but all right. Still in France. I guess you got to drop old uncle off. When we return, Vitsuk and I and our brothers, we will have to avenge our father's death. This doesn't seem to be breaking Rolo's heart. <laughs> he knows his wife's not going to be happy when he gets back. Well, then you may as well just go with him. <laughs> we are going to raise an army to invade England and avenge the death of our father. Will you come with us? Would you really want me to come with you? You will need all the help we can get. After all, don't you have a reason? She does, but... Until Ivar stabs her in the back. You are inviting other rulers to come and join your army. Don't you think some of them will be envious when they see the size of this trading station? It depends, I suppose, on what is more important to you. Yeah, they need governance here, too. Avenging Ragnar is pointless if you come back to nothing. Yeah. I do not trust him. You should look to improve your own security. If the gods don't protect me, then who can? Fair enough. <gasps> What's her name? I think it is Tanarus. She's very frightened, Helga. Don't be afraid. I will love you. I think she's in shock. What's happened to you, Helga? You be you're better than this. Who is this? His father is an earl. They call me Ego the Bastard. But you would like to be Earl. Always scheming. He's actually in a position to do it, though. Yeah? He's got some power. Why were you silent when I demanded justice from Lakitha? We have different memories of mother. She doted on you and she ignored me. She had eyes only for you and for Harbard. Fair. So you feel sorry for yourself? Poor little secret. You're wrong, Ivor. I don't feel sorry for myself. Yeah, of course not. Good lord, why are you an asshole? What does it matter what your mother did to you? She was still your mother. Hey, you would say that, wouldn't you? Mommy's little favorite. Oh, you're just really sad she can breastfeed you anymore, is that it? <clears throat> Good lord. Well, he was going for it. Whoever would have thought that you two were brothers. Good god. He's gonna do it one day. I feel like one of these brothers is gonna be dead by the end of this season. If it's one of those two, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be Ivor, man. I feel like it's gonna be secret, yeah. To what do we owe the honor of your visit? There is much talk of the revenge of the sons of Ragnar. We are already well prepared for any incursions into our kingdom. I doubt it, no. Then should you not reinstate your alliance with King Egbert? I have no wish or need to be allied to such a degenerate monarch. You should talk. Decent point, yeah. We are all aware of your immoral relationship with your father-in-law. We pray that you will return to your wedded husband. There is no need to pray for me. Then you will be damned. If I am to hell, at least I will enjoy the company of my degenerate monarch. <laughs> I want to make you all an offer. Anyone from our homelands who wants good, rich lands to farm can come and live in my kingdom. Mm. You are no longer a part of Asrolo. Too much bad blood, Rolo. Once a betrayer, always a betrayer. 
It's a nice offer, but nobody's gonna trust you again. No, I mean, at least they left in peace. That's probably, that's actually a really good start. <laughs> Nobody had to die. Maybe one day someone will take him up on that offer. Husband? Isla? Hey, babe. <laughs> you came back to us. Thank God. Truly, thank God. She's putting on a show. Oh, yeah. Once all these kids are out the, out the side, it's... Ah! <laughs> Your name right in the balls. Fila putain, Nordman bastard. <laughs> I got that. Pour qu'est-ce que mort c'est à Folight? Enculé bastard, Nordman foire un connard. Putain les chiens. All right, that's just abuse at this point. He can take it. He's got much worse from his brother, so. Ah, oh, come on. That was a little bit of hazing. That was actual <laughs> abuse. Because he what, wanted to go off and play with the boys? Yeah. You see why now? What are you doing? You're not a slave anymore. Oh. You can't decide that? I can. I am the son of Ragnar Lothbrok. I don't care about Lagatha. You were technically his mother's slave. Why? You will have to be free in order to marry one of us. Should be a good offer as long as nobody kills you. I don't know. Well, wait a minute. Wouldn't that technically be uh, Lagatha's slave now? I don't know how that works. Uh, I don't either. Actually, I just don't like the idea of it at all, but still. She's cool with it. I want to talk to you about books, Alfred. If you're going to be king one day, you need to understand that books are just as important as swords or plowshares. Probably even more. This is a work by Gregory the Great. And he asks what kind of man he is or ought to be who is to rule. Can the occupation of power distract the mind of the ruler? Yes. Well, he's asking the right questions. <laughs> to the future. To the future. <clears throat> drink up, drink up. <laughs> Lesson one as a king, boy. <laughs> you hold your liquor. That's right. <laughs> Let's drink. These are great matters. I mean, he's getting, like, two very valuable lessons here. Mm. Mm. This being the second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you think I was referring to? Reading and knowledge. Reading and coping. Mm. <laughs> you may be king. I hope so. And yet, I know it's burdens. They're very real. You need to drink more wine. <laughs> I don't want any more, Grandfather. Nonsense. So join me in one more. I'm not drinking alone, kid. Not drink, you little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying you understand, but you obviously don't. I've just been drinking water. Oh. Don't ever let yourself be influenced by other people. Always think your own thoughts. I'll be damned. Now that's a great lesson. You had me fooled, yeah. Eckbert. That was, that's incredible how fortunate he is to be born who he is. Mm -hmm. Since I love some of you, I urge you again to take heed of my warning. The sons of Ragnar are sure to come. As for you, sweet sister, have a care for your own soul and learn to read. I thought you were going to be like, come with me so we can survive. That's what I thought. You don't want to be in Aela's court when the Vikings no. show up. Welcome to Katigat. And who might you be? My name is Uba. Forgive me, Oba. If I'd known, I would never have been so rude. Your father was a great hero. There we go. <laughs> Who's the creeper? <laughs> His name is Ivan, and he's my brother. Yeah, so be careful who you're laughing at. So I would suggest you stop laughing at him right now. Instead, if you want to stay alive, I would want to respect and fear him. And that's not Uba threatening you, that's him warning you. Yeah. Ivor can take care of himself. You had no right to free my slaves without my permission. I don't remember you asking permission to kill my mother. That's different. Nah, not really. I'm queen now. I just don't know for how long. Okay, quit being so threatening. She started this conversation. She looked the other way on it too. I wanted to tell you, you look just like your father looked when he was a young man. When I first knew him. He does resemble him. Uh oh. Y'all are making the move now. Oh, they're now? Okay. Something's happening. You better arm yourselves. 
Knock it off! All the shield maidens have been subdued very easily here. She could just get up and walk away. <laughs> she really could. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Nick of time. If you kill her, my brothers, you have to kill me too. Maybe we should. Shut up. Yeah, seriously, shut up. You want revenge. So would I. But more importantly, we have to avenge our father. And that is what we are going to do. All Buren has to do is step on you, Ivor. <laughs> Okay, back to your drinks, people. I tell you what, they almost got away with it, though. Yeah. So you have your revenge. Buren, you're a man. <laughs> you handled that very confidently. Log your thighs. Building some serious defenses. There will always be weak places in the defense. It just takes a clever person to figure out where the weak places are. And are you a clever person, Egil? Well, you two aren't, so... <laughs> showing up, aren't they? Yeah, this episode's gonna live up to its title. Have you heard about Mother? Yes. We jumped under the ice because of her. So I don't quite agree that we should kill Agatha because of it. Ivar thinks we should. Ivar's crazy, you know that. Mm. If we kill Agatha, we have to kill Bjorn, and I <laughs> don't want to do that. <laughs> well, maybe I couldn't do it anyways. That's my guess. Yeah. How can you go with Ivar when he wants to kill your mother? We want to kill Ayla. Nothing else matters right now, woman. It matters to me, even if it doesn't matter to you. Listen, I did not come back here to be told what to do. Not by you. Not by anyone! Oh my god. You were calm a moment ago, and now it's this? He really loved his father. Yeah. Hello, Floki. Just let yourself in, okay. <laughs> Who's this? Her name is Tanadus. She'll make a good slave, I'm sure. She is not a slave. Loki's face. Let's see. <laughs> Knock it off, Ivor. It's very sweet of you to drag your crippled ass all the way over here to see me. <laughs> well, you think I want to be an old fool like you? The way you behave, dear Ivor, you'll never get the chance. Mm. <laughs> Oh my god. It's a good way to not let things bother you. Yeah. Now that we're going to England to fight, it's about time I didn't have to crawl about. Especially on the battlefield. Uh... I need you to invent the wheelchair. You will now be flying our first plane. Oh no. Come on, Ducky. <laughs> Almost there. Good god. Come on. <laughs> this ain't fair to everybody else. Oh, have you already figured something out? I call it a horse. Oh, it's a chariot. Oh, nice. It's your legs, Ivar. It's your wings. Oh, told you he was going to fly. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. He's going to need its own boat. It probably will, yeah. <laughs> Jeesh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now where is Sigurd? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got mobility like nobody else now. As long as he has a road. Yeah. Where's Lagatha? She has gone to Hedeby. Oh. And when did this happen? Hey, Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> My God, beer and you're what I expect. Uh, she's like his father. Mm -hmm. Now I can't fault beer in there. Okay. That's something I've wanted to do since I first saw her too. I mean, Ashton's a nice looking woman. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. Clearly, you know, in Viking land, they, uh, they, they're quite keen on sharing things. So. Yeah, but you don't normally share something with your you know, parent. 
That's a little weird, but, you know. Uh, I must have learned it from the Jones boys. You know what it probably was? They learned it from, uh, who was that, who was that king that Ragnar had to kill in season two? Uh, Horik. Horik. They learned it from Horik. Because Horik was oh, like, yeah. hey, I want you to sleep with my son. <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, Sigi. You know, I stand corrected. It apparently is a common thing <laughs> for the Vikings. Yes. It's incredible what, what was normalized at different times of history uh -huh. compared compare it to today in certain parts of the world what's considered okay and what's not considered okay depending on where you live i suppose and it's almost night and day you know like in some cases some things that were normal are now incredibly taboo right so, well i don't know if that was necessarily normal back then it might just be you know the storytelling here there's not something you hear about very often i'll say that okay well we're gonna let that go then <laughs> Because that, that looks like, you know, that life is completely normalized to them. So I mean, we've seen it more than once. So let's let's just jump right into the big part that happened here. Those boys made an attempt. Yes, they did. They were about that close to well, either meeting the gods themselves or sending Lagatha to do it. Yeah, that's the thing. We don't know how that fight was going to go. I mean, mind you, you know, both Uba and Ivar are fairly capable fighters, but one of them doesn't have legs. The other one doesn't have much actual real-life combat experience. Neither one of them really do. I Ivar got lucky with a few people that were sleeping. Yeah. You know, Ivar did kill some people in England with his father. That's what I'm talking about. But you're dealing with Lagatha, who's like one of the most legendary fighters in Scandinavia here. Yes. Ever, people know her probably as well as they know Ragnar. And she was an earl and now a queen. And she became queen by taking it. So. Yeah. Like, if anybody's earned her position in the show, it's her. Yes. In more ways than just that. Yes, so. for sure. Yeah, boys, you are way out of your depth here. My question is, who are all these people that were supporting them? Because at this point, you know, they're not kings or princes anymore. They're just dudes. So, like, where they find a small group of people to actually go around and pull this thing off? Probably just some like-minded guys, you know, who were happy with the way things were and did not like what Lagatha had done, and they took an opportunity when they saw it. That's the only answer I've got. Maybe. I mean, there's so much scheming going on in the show because we saw the other king there too. What's his name? Harold. Harold and his and his brother, yeah. whatever. Halfton. Half. Uh, Halfton. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, they they got their own plot in mind too. They're clearly trying to find a way to attack the city. Yeah. So yeah, you know, there's, there's constantly scheming going on. Everybody wants power apparently, except the one time Ragnar offers it. Well, those guys, Harold and Halfton, you said it's like they scheme, but they really don't ever come close to anything that they actually want. It seems. Seems to me like because they're not clever themselves, like I pointed out there. Really, they I think I think just some fighting skills and whatever have gotten them lucky and his ambition. Yeah, I put him in in that position. So, whatever else he's got up his sleeve, I who knows. I think they know that they can't trust the guy anyway, mm -hmm. because it's like you you've arrived already, seeming incredibly untrustworthy. It's hard to it's hard to hide when you're a rat already anyway. So I say with that scar, you know, you're pretty distinctive there. Yes, and your and your brother's kind of like sneaky too. He's, he's a little shifty. Yeah. You know they're building their defenses. If anything, I think their weak point is that port right now. If they get that wall up, because it's just wide open. Yeah, there's not gonna be a wall at the port, so you can pretty much bring in a whole bunch of ships if you want to. Yeah, they can't hit you from the sides because there's mountains on both sides. Right. So. Yeah, that's, that's probably the way to do it. You attack that wall head on, you're just gonna have a lot of depth. So. Pretty much. We've also seen some stuff going on back in England. Judith is trying to warn her parents and... They don't appear to be listening. Well, Ayla says he's ready. I don't know what his definition of ready is. Nothing he's worked up to this point has actually... Or tried up to this point has actually worked. Then I'm going to say he's just arrogant. Straight up. Mm -hmm. God bless Judith for trying. You know, that I mean, she's, she's like, you're still my parents and that's still my sister. Yeah. So I'm going to give you two the benefit of the doubt and do this more so for her sake, I think. In, in that I don't want to see her dead. And if you die, she probably does, so. She really should have tried harder to get her sister out of that. Because the Vikings are not going to be generous to the women. Not not at all. Yeah, we're, we're going to see what his idea of preparedness looks like then. Not No hiding from it now. The other thing we saw, and is probably my favorite part of this, part of this episode. Well, this one was. I know the chariot was cool, but mm -hmm. what I'm thinking of is how Eckbert is teaching Alfred there. Yeah, I think him him teaching him how to be how to be a good king, and a good ruler, and what's important when doing that. I think he's learning some incredibly valuable lessons, just really just for life in general. That'll give you an edge up on everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because Ivor got some similar teaching from his from his uh, own father, while he could still. Yeah. 
but Alfred's going to have the benefit for having Eckbert around a little longer to show what's what. Yeah, I so say now, now that uh, Ragnar is dead, Eckbert's pretty much the smartest character in the show. And, you know, him passing that information on to Alfred should definitely help him out eventually when he takes the throne, which is as he's being groomed to do. Certainly. He's certainly not grooming his uh, Aethelwolf to do it. No. So. In fact, he keeps trying to find excuse to get Aethelwolf killed. But well, Aethelwolf's a blunt instrument with a, you know, with an eye for Jesus. So Aethelwolf's not a complete dummy. He, he does figure some things out. He's got some martial skill. He wouldn't be a horrible king by any stretch, but... No, I'll give him credit because he does, uh, he does have his eye on priorities in the right direction there mm -hmm. certainly in terms of like you know, we know Ragnar's coming back we, we need to take all the time we have right now to prepare for this yeah but then again he's got that weird streak where he just because he abandoned a child to the wild yeah all right he's also real easy to kill people for no reason he's got a bit of an anger issue he does which is going to be a liability for him just like it kind of is for Ivar because Ivar you know for all his intellect he can't control himself at times and ultimately I think that's going to be an issue for the both of them I think you're right and, uh, and of course, uh, Floki knew what Ivar was going to need in the future, and he made sure to have it done for him. Yeah. He, you know, he built him a damn chariot like it was like it was like his, it was a boat. And that, that chariot is going to be intimidating out there too, because nobody else is going to have anything like that. Oh. At least not that we've seen in this show. Isn't that incredible? Nobody else is using chariots, but here comes Ivar. <laughs> Which is weird because if you look at history, chariots have existed for like thousands of years. Like, Before this, right? Yeah. Yeah. The the Egyptians used it, the Romans used them a little bit, I think. It was a big thing in the in the Middle East. You know, I think the knowledge would be there somewhere, but I guess not. Well, people just abandoned it. I mean, to be fair, there is some, some value in having a more mobile cavalry, but chariots are still effective, and it's been shown throughout history that they can, that they can you know, do a lot of damage. I think at the very least, you could do you can do incredible damage, especially if you use them on a more uh, home defensive purpose there. You know, somebody's an attacking force. Once they've committed to wherever they are, you just send the chariots in. Yeah. And let them clear them out. Strap some blades to the wheels. And put some archers on them. Just let them get in there and wreak havoc. And that's why it works so perfectly for... Uh... Ivar, because he does he does have that archery skill. So he, he can sit there and just pick targets off all day long and get away from the fighting when he has to. Yeah, I, was like, I can't, can't wait to see this thing in action. Man. Yeah, it should be pretty cool. Lots to come there, and of course the army is is assembling here. And it's gotten big in no time. Yeah, now that Bjorn's there, they got most of their forces back to Kattegat. A few more Earls show up, and you should be in business. Getting exciting here. Yeah. Only thing now to do is to move on to the next one, fam. And move on we shall, guys. As always, guys, if this is your first time with us, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. Also, if you feel like supporting this channel any further, uh, we would love it if you hit that join button and became a member. It's not required, guys, and Dan certainly wouldn't recommend it. Maybe he would. But uh, we would love to have you anyway, guys. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Skull fam. Skull Dan. Skull Joe. Later, guys. Later, guys.